Firebase is an easy-to-use backend which provides services from authentication to databases so you don't have to code them from scratch. We will use it to create a simple application with Tkinter where users can log in, create orders and view them all in a table retrieved from the database. I've already created the interface here so we can focus on learning how to use Firebase. You can install it from the GitHub repo here and installing all the necessary requirements by running this command. The interface uses custom Tkinter and a few additional widgets which functions very similarly to Tkinter just that it comes with much better styling. Next, let's head over to Firebase and create a new project. Give it any name and we can go ahead and disable Google Analytics. In the console, click on the Authentication tab. First, we'll need to enable email as a sign-in method. We can then manually create a user account by entering an email and a password. When the application initially launches, the user is brought to this login screen. We'll need to add the functionality to send the credentials to Firebase for it to authenticate the user and then store the token it sends back, which we will attach whenever we make a request to the database. The way that the login code here works is that the email and password fields are properties of the class and whenever the user clicks on the login button, this login handler function is called. We will need to send a post request with the credentials to this URL here in the documentation, where the API key can be found in your project settings. I'll go ahead and paste my API key here in the URL. This API endpoint expects us to pass in the email, password and a true false value of whether the token should be returned. We will store those details in a dictionary where we can use the get method to retrieve the current value from the entry widget. This input data dictionary then needs to be specified as the JSON parameter. After the request is made, we can first decode the response and check if the status code is 200, which indicates that it was successful. If it is successful, Firebase will send a token under the ID token key, which we can then store as a property of the class so that we can use it later on to verify that the user has been logged in. Once they are logged in, we can direct them to the create order form using the switch main view method on our class, which I've already added code for. This method also requires us to specify the view that we want to switch to. In our case, it will be the create underscore order view. Lastly, let's use the CTK message box add-on to display a success message like so. If we test the app now with the email and password you entered earlier, you should be able to log in successfully. Let's also consider the case if the login is not successful, where the response will contain the error message. We will use this to display an alert using the same message box. Now that the login functionality works, let's make it so that whenever the user submits this form, all the order details are sent to the database in Firebase. For this, let's go back to our Firebase console and we'll be using the Firestore database. Make sure you create it in test mode as we'll configure the security rules later on. From there, we'll create an orders collection which acts as a table that can have many rows of data. These individual rows are called documents and we'll store the data for each of our order. I'll go ahead and create an initial one as an example. Since the form has 5 fields for the item's name, customer, address, status and quantity, each document should have those same fields as well. We will also need to specify the data type. In this case, there will be strings except for the quantity, which is an integer. Back in our code, whenever the create order button has been pressed, this create order function will be called. Within the code, I've also created the entry widgets as properties of the class, so that we can access their values from anywhere. From the documentation, Firebase requires us to use this URL where we replace this part with projects followed by the project ID which you can get by going to your project settings slash databases slash the database ID which should be default in brackets slash documents and the document ID which is orders in my case. We can then store the request body in a dictionary like we did previously. Firebase requires us to represent the documents fields like so where we set a key as the fields name and its value as a dictionary with the data type followed by its value. You can view all the possible data types in the documentation, but you'll mostly be using either string value or integer value. We can retrieve the item's name, customer and address values using the get method since they are all entry widgets. As for the status since it is a radio button, what I've done here is to use a string variable from Tkinter that changes based on which radio button is currently being selected. We can get the value of this string variable using the get method as well. Lastly, the quantity is a property that is being increased and decreased whenever the user updates it and this function is called. We will use all of this information to make a post request to the URL we defined earlier like so. Once the request has been sent, we can decode the response body like before and we will check if it was successful to show a success message using the CTK message box function. If not, we will display an error message retrieved from the response body. Whenever we fill up the form and click on create order now, the data shops in our database here where we can modify it as well. Next, to create the data so that we can display them all in a table, we'll first need to modify this function which is called whenever the user clicks on the All Orders tab. 
It then returns the data which is passed into the CTK table widget. So we need to format the data into this format which it expects of having each list represent an individual row. I'll go ahead and comment out these example rows. Next, we can use the same URL as we did when creating the order. The difference here is that we'll be performing a GET request instead of a POST request. Besides that, Firebase also allows us to specify the columns we want to query for. So if a document doesn't include the set of columns we asked for, then it won't be included. We do this by creating a dictionary of parameters where Firebase expects the key to be masked of field paths, and we can then include the fields we need in a list. In our case, this should be a list of all the fields we previously used when creating the order. We will specify this as a parameter in the request and not as the body since we're performing a GET request here. After the response data has been decoded, let's print it out first to see how we can format it into what we need. Once you sign in and click on the All Orders tab, we can see that data is formatted as a list of documents with the fields in the dictionary, like how we did it when we were creating the order. First up, let's loop over all the documents. For each document, we'll initialize a new row and we'll retrieve the dictionary of fields. We will first append to the row the value for the item's name using the data type that we set it to when creating the order. Let's do this for all the column headers we have, which are the customer, address, status, and quantity. As for the quantity, it should be an integer value. Once all values in the row have been added, let's append that row to the table's data. If we try and click on the All Orders tab now, we should be able to retrieve all the orders and have them displayed here. Currently, although our app runs perfectly fine, there are a few vulnerabilities, one of them being that anyone can post and get data from this API endpoint, which isn't exactly what we want. We only want for the sign-in users to be able to create and view the orders. To achieve this, we can head to the security rules tab within the Firestore database, and let's first delete all the comments that are here. From there, change the if statement to check if the request.off.uid is not equal to now. Essentially, what this does is that we'll send the token with each request, and Firebase will use that to retrieve the user's ID. Whenever a user tries to read or write from the database and the user ID doesn't exist because they have an invalid token, the request will be denied. So, before we send a request, we'll need to attach the token first. By creating a header with the authorization key set to bearer, followed by the token that Firebase gives when the user logs in. This is the format that Firebase expects us to give the token in, and you then attach it to the request like so. I'll duplicate this code for querying all the orders as well. If you try to log in, create an order, and to view all orders now, they should both still work. Besides that, under the authentication settings, let's also ensure that users aren't able to sign up for accounts through the API. Since the intent for this application is for user accounts to be created manually through the Firebase dashboard, and only allowing those users to access our application. If not, anybody would be able to access the database by simply creating an account through the API. That's all for how to implement a simple login system and a database with a taken application. In terms of pricing, using the authentication service is free for the first 50,000 monthly users, but the Firestore database will only remain free for these limits. After that, you need to pay for storage and for each read, write, and delete operation that occurs. Firebase also offers much more common backend services that you would usually have to code from scratch and then host it manually. That's all for this video. If it has helped, you'll probably enjoy watching this video next. Besides that, please consider possibly liking this video and subscribing to my channel for more such content.